religion. Uh, okay, I'm from Malaysia, I live in Singapore because I find, I mean, we have a melting pot of cultures and religious belief. And I, again, to bring back hate again, I hate it when people use religion as a way, as an excuse to do or not do something. Like, I epically hate when people say, we, want, we need to fight this war because of religion. Frankly, it, God is a nice guy, person and a guy. I, I think he, he wouldn't want his creations fighting each other. So even in business, they sometimes use religion in, I think it's a very negative, disempowering way for yourself and actually your business. So what do you think about that? I'm not really sure what the question is. So what would be the question? No, go ahead. See if yeah. you can reframe the question because that's the clarity is power here. Okay. So, so okay, I would think, is it wrong for the person to use religion as an excuse or handicap for their personal or business growth? I wouldn't say it's wrong because I believe that there's guidance systems for people yeah. and there's belief systems for people and there are value systems for people. I think and what, we respect that. And I, I think what is that. sad would be when people are not aware of it and they're blindly led by things and they're not curious. I think that's the, the part that I have a bit of a, a battle, personal battle with institutionalized religions mm -hmm. that simply get people to have blind faith as opposed to expressing their curiosity, expressing their their interest and their expressions and just following a piece of paper that was written by a bunch of men uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago and that you're supposed to follow it blind blindly. That I have an issue with and I don't feel that that serves people's higher self or their journey on this planet. True. That's the part that I have a big channel. Okay. Uh, like having said that, so um, okay, like, like for the audience and the viewers, uh, I used to be a Buddhist monk before. So, uh, and it's always, but you know what? My, one, my, one thing my master always encouraged me is that yes, we have scriptures. The Tripitaka is like this thick and three books of them. So, but the first part is that they never encourage you to actually read it. As a monk, you you kind of need to read it, but as a layman, you don't need to. So, but because what my master usually says is that even what I teach, you must question it. It's like, you create some doubts because through the doubts as you go out and find answers, that's how you experience some form of enlightenment, you know. So, for, for my, my relationship, my master and me is always, okay, I, I made a statement, go out, you can try to prove me wrong or just create some doubts around it. I think, I think that's one thing that we should really talk about is that we... But uh, one thing I do is that every week I take one belief or one practice I have and I actually question, it's like, is this even necessary anymore? Or, or what does it even mean? It, it may mean something a year ago, but does it mean today? So I know religious is a, religion is a sensitive thing, but sometimes... It's one of the most sensitively, uh, emotionally yeah. charged That's topics why people on don't the planet. Talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the things that I would love with kickstart and some of the programs that we're going to be doing is let's take the topics that are so energetically charged and let's look for ways to bring different perspectives yet based on respect based on curiosity yeah. based on on ways of interacting that perhaps can uh, serve and assist people because sure. again when you, you when you're in a family that doesn't talk about religion and you're forced to do it well guess what my experience is that the kids are going to probably be a little rebellious to that yeah. And that's what's happening right now. And I think what if they run a family business? It's even worse, right? Well, exactly. Well, passing a business on generation to generation where it was led by certain very strict religious rules, grandparent, grandchild generation who might be actually exploring their spirituality or their religion, there will be major clashes. True. But I think it's always like, I mean, we know a friend who's like, I'm not allowed to open a certain restaurant on a certain holy day and uh, the restaurant belongs to the mom and it's a bit sensitive and he could he believed that he could bring more business and all that uh two things is either you i you I, I wouldn't say try to prove your mom wrong but try to prove that you know on saturdays it's a profitable day and try to convince her about it actually another way that i didn't think about earlier now that in retrospect actually when i look back yes you have seven days in a week so are you being too hardcore about I need to get the restaurant open on Saturday. Why don't you try to channel that into, okay, I got six days. How can I maximize business on the other six days? So I think that's a very much like a Gandhi's approach because he's always very flexible. It's like, because he preached nonviolence, right? So he needs to look at other ways that he can do 
to not pick up a gun or even a knife uh, to a fight. He has to do something else. So he can easily, I think the followers at one point may say, you know what, Gandhi, it's a lot easier if you just pick up a gun, just shoot the bastards, right? But he refused, he, he refused on that. And look where he is. We, we still talk about Gandhi so many decades after, you know, after he has gone, the things they've done. I think in the, in the example you're talking about for business, you, yep. you can step it back into to ask the why. Why are we in business? Like, wh why is this business even around? True. If it's there to be a sustainable, profitable business, then yep. let's allow that to be part of our driving uh, mission. If it's there to be a charitable or a religious uh, entity, then we can start looking at business differently or maybe even get out of that business and just do charitable programs that can yeah. feed people or can do other types of activities. So Actually for that, I would think, why not we just do the friend? Why not right. we just do Saturday? Open it up, but all the money that we make after taking away the cost, we would give it to a certain cost, uh, you know, charity and all that. Or we do where pay as you want. You, you order a meal, there's no price tag to it, but just know that if you put 50 bucks after minusing the cost and the necessary expenses, the rest will just go to charity. And I think it's a good practice. It creates, it, in a business point of view, you have attracted people who normally would just walk by your store and then sometimes they say, hey, this is interesting and there's a charity. I, can, I get to give back. I get to eat really good food. I get to try new things and I get to give back. So that's one creative way that perhaps you won't offend the parents. It's like, yeah, I'm just trying to do more. I have this ability to cook good food and market good food and now, I can do that and at the same time still give more to, back to the people. Yeah. I think our topic is about religion and business and that, is there any other areas that would be topical for our, our listeners or viewers right now about religion and business? Maybe some of the conflicts or challenges or opportunities and uh, possibilities of, of new ways of doing business Cross religion. I think I'm I'm actually really thrilled the way that hmm. Singapore is has been set up, and, and they really do allow different people from different races, different creeds, different religions to to sure. operate in a, in a respectful marketplace. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, this is something that my mom taught me is that even though we are Buddhist, but we don't impose our beliefs or principles on anything else. Okay, laws you need to impose. Like you can't kill anywhere in the world, so it's it's quite right for you to tell your friend, hey. They don't kill someone. But if I believe... Unless you're the American military. Uh, yeah, okay. But, but if I have like every 15 day of the month, I become a vegetarian. Uh, my mom has always felt that it's actually wrong for Dave to bring me out to a vegetarian place. And unless you want it, but if you are kind of forcing yourself to eat vegetarian because of me, she always felt that it's a bit wrong. So why not just go to a normal restaurant and just eat broccoli? It works as well. So I think the message when it comes to religion is that, uh, again, it's also disassociate and actually ask when you, there are certain principles, question it. It's like, is it even valid? I think it still is, but it's the practice of it still valid. Yeah. So again, I tend to fall back to this belief of different strokes for, for different, different folks. folks. Yeah. And I, I tend to live by that. And, and that's one of the ways that I look to honor different religions. And if I'm going to be having different friends from different countries and different places. Uh, there is, is a sense of, of curiosity, there's an, a sense of respect, there's a sensitive, uh, sensitivity that I'm going to learn new things and then yep. it's up to me to choose and when I do go to, into different places of prayer, or different, I'm actually really curious on, on some of the practices and some of the, the beliefs behind it and if I choose to be there then I'll choose to explore that and that's yeah. I think I that's respectful as well. It's, there's an element of tolerance there, there's an element of respect there that I guess the area that creates the, the cloudiness or even some of the energetic charge is when there's a feeling of disrespect. Yeah. And I think you don't go in asking questions I don't feel is offensive. Like if you go to someone and say, why, why do you practice like that? And I think the body language is important as well. If you're not trying to pass judgments, so you're really curious. Sincere yeah. curiosity. Just, why do you pray five times in a day? I, I really want to know. And I think the person in the right mind will not say will not not want to answer you. Mm. They would actually do their best to actually answer you. And you know what? I think in the process, you allow them to actually reinforce in their faith as well. You actually reminding them what's the purpose or why are they praying five times in a day, for example. Well, this is, I think, a great start to perhaps a whole new segment that we can do is, is talking about topics that are taboo. 
Yeah. And that might be another way to <laughs> allow entrepreneurs to look for new wonderful opportunities in the market because guess what? Everything that I'm seeing on the internet, the taboo topics, there aren't any. So maybe we do want to start talking <laughs> about clean. some of this because people are actually looking for dialogue in the areas that might be considered taboo. Yeah, true. Okay, until you're next here from us again. Uh, I think leave a comment on the stuff that you feel that is a bit sensitive to talk about, that you want Dave and I, or even Dave brings someone else to actually talk about it. Politics, sex, maybe, I don't know. Uh, weird t-shirt designs, the new Gen Zs. Just leave a comment and then we do a vote. And yeah, we'll pick someone to talk about it. Sounds awesome. Okay, Back see you at soon. You.